Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about Neonatal Brain Ultrasound. Neonatal Brain Ultrasound is often performed on premature infants and high-risk infants. Most of the views taken are coronal as it provides the most detail about the brain. On the left side is the normal brain of a full-term infant in coronal view. This hyperechoic line in the middle is the interhemispheric fissure. These small hypoechoic structures are the frontal horns of lateral ventricles and between these horns is the cavum septum pellucidum. This line is the sylvian fissure and below that is the temporal lobe on both sides. And over here is an image of a normal brain in premature infant. They usually have larger lateral ventricles as compared to full-term infants. And another difference is the prominence of sulci. Premature infants have less number of sulci seen on ultrasound, whereas a full-term infant has more prominent sulci. These are sagittal views of a normal brain in a full-term infant. This layered structure is the corpus callosum. Below that, the anechoic area is the lateral ventricle. Below the lateral ventricle is the third ventricle right here. As we go down, we will find the midbrain. This is the pons. And this is medulla oblongata. Behind these is the hyperechoic cerebellar vermis. This is the occipital lobe. This region is the caudate nucleus. And this groove is the caudothalamic groove. Behind the caudate nucleus is the thalamus. This hyperechoic structure is the choroid plexus which produces cerebrospinal fluid. Now we move on to pathologies. The first case is of hydrocephalus. There is abnormal accumulation of CSF within the lateral ventricles. This leads to dilated ventricles or ventriculomegaly. We see enlarged lateral ventricles and over here the temporal horn is also dilated. Here is another case of hydrocephalus. We see dilated ventricles with temporal horns also dilated. Most intracranial hemorrhages in neonates are germinal matrix hemorrhages. They are also called periventricular intraventricular hemorrhages. They mostly occur in premature infants. This has four grades. On grade one, the hemorrhage is only present outside the ventricle. We will see hyperechoic clots outside the lateral ventricles. This image is in sagittal view. We can see a clot outside the ventricle. This is grade 1 germinal matrix hemorrhage. In grade 2, the hemorrhage will extend into the ventricles but without ventriculomegaly. There are clots outside and inside the ventricles. This is a sagittal view of grade 2 germinal matrix hemorrhage. We see clots inside and outside the ventricle. In grade 3, the hemorrhage will extend into the ventricles and take up to 50% of the ventricle. Ventriculomegaly will also be present. This is grade 3 hemorrhage in sagittal view. Ventricle is dilated and there is a greater degree of 
intraventricular hemorrhage. In grade 4 hemorrhage, all features of grade 1, 2, and 3 are present. Furthermore, there is extension of hemorrhage into the brain tissue. The hemorrhage is present in the cerebral cortex. A frontal horn cyst can be a normal variant. It is also called coactation of frontal horn and conatal cyst. It is usually formed by folding of the frontal horn on itself. Chiari 2 malformation has a number of features. There is downward displacement of the fourth ventricle and it is enlarged as well. The mesa intermedia is a linking tissue between thalamus and third ventricle. Normally, it won't be visualized. But in case of Chiari 2 malformation, it can become enlarged and prominent. Third ventricle is also dilated. Cisterna magna is the space between the vermis and the posterior rim of foramen magnum. In Chiari 2 malformation, this space is closed. This is called obliteration of cisterna magna. This is a coronal image. We see dilated lateral and third ventricles with an abnormally shaped fourth ventricle. You can see the difference in shape and location of the fourth ventricle. Bat wing configuration of lateral ventricles is another feature. This is due to pointed frontal horns. Colpocephaly can also occur. This ventricle is large and has a specific teardrop shape. This is a coronal image showing colpocephaly. It is different from batwing sign because it has a more rounded shape. This image shows the posterior aspect of the brain. This hyperechoic structure is the glomus of choroid plexus. It is basically the largest part. And down here is the cerebellum. In agenesis of corpus callosum, we will see parallel orientation of lateral ventricles. You will see that the ventricles are in a straight line and are parallel to each other. They are also enlarged. In this sagittal view, we can see that the corpus callosum is absent. A high riding third ventricle is also present. It is higher than its usual location. Another feature is the widely spaced and separated frontal horns. You can see these horns are much further apart from each other. A choroid plexus cyst will appear as an anechoic fluid collection inside the choroid plexus. A corpus callosum lipoma will appear as a hyperechoic mass at the interhemispheric fissure. This mass usually does not cause mass effect. Similarly, a choroid plexus lipoma may also occur. It appears as a hyperechoic mass at the choroid plexus. This is an axial view of a normal brain showing the cerebellum, the fourth ventricle, and the hyperechoic cerebellar vermis. This anechoic region is the cisterna magna. In Dandy Walker malformation, there is an abnormal white connection between fourth ventricle and cisterna magna. The fourth ventricle is dilated. In Mega Cisterna Magna, we will see a large anechoic region behind the cerebellum. It is a normal variant. It is usually diagnosed when cisterna magna 
measures 10 millimeters or more. Here is an axial view of Mega Cisterna Magna. We can see a large anechoic region behind the cerebellum. Septo optic dysplasia is the mildest form of holoprosencephaly, which has a series of brain abnormalities. In this form, the septum pellucidum is absent, and we see fused frontal horns of lateral ventricle. Instead of two separate horns, we see a large fused ventricle. This is septo optic dysplasia in sagittal view. We only see a large ventricle. Other structures seem normal. A lober holoprosencephaly is the most severe type. We will see a single large ventricle and fused thalami. The interhemispheric fissure is absent. The third ventricle is also absent and there is a very small amount of brain tissue. Semilober holoprosencephaly is less severe than the A-lober type. A single ventricle is present. The thalami are also fused but we do see an interhemispheric fissure. It is not complete but it is still present. More brain tissue is found as compared to the A-lober type. In schizencephaly, clefts are found within the brain. It has two types, open-lipped and closed-lipped. In the open-lipped type, the white cerebral cleft is communicating with the ventricle and the skull. The cleft has reached the skull bone. In the closed lip type, the cleft is connected to the ventricle but not the skull. You can see this cleft is just around the ventricle. Lysencephaly is a condition in which there is absence of brain sulci. It is also called smooth brain. Here is a sagittal view of lysencephaly. We do not see the normal brain sulci like we see in the normal image. In porencephaly, a cystic lesion is seen communicating with the ventricle. The cyst is connected to the ventricle. In hydranencephaly, there is a large collection of CSF surrounding the thalamus. It looks like holoprosencephaly, but there is a difference. Fox cerebri is present here, whereas in holoprosencephaly, Fox cerebri is absent. Some brain tissue is also found here. This is a sagittal view showing hydranencephaly. We see a large collection of CSF and some brain tissue. Cystic encephalomalacia is a condition in which there are multiple cystic areas in the brain along with formation of septations. Multiple cysts and septations are seen. Here is a sagittal view showing cystic encephalomalacia. We see various cysts and septations within the brain. In aqueductal stenosis, the lateral and third ventricles are dilated, but the fourth ventricle is normal. This is a sagittal view. We see dilated third ventricle. The lateral ventricle is not in view, and the fourth ventricle is normal. This is a case of acute cerebellar hemorrhage. Hyperechoic bright areas are seen within the cerebellum. This is the hemorrhage. 
subarachnoid hemorrhage can also be visualized on ultrasound in some cases. We will find hyperechoic hemorrhage around the cerebellum in the cisterna magna. This is a coronal image of a normal brain of a premature infant. This is the choroid plexus, periventricular leukomalacia affects white matter of the brain. It is graded based on severity. In grade 1, hyperechoic areas are seen outside the ventricles. No cystic areas are found. In grade 2, we will see multiple small cysts outside the ventricles in addition to the hyperechoic areas. In grade 3, the number of cysts is increased and the hyperechoic areas also take up a larger area. Grade 4 has large cysts. The size of the cysts has greatly increased. Appearances of cerebral edema include coarse brain echotexture, Rough areas that are slightly hyperechoic are seen. The ventricles are difficult to visualize. They have a slit-like appearance. This is a sagittal view of cerebral edema. There is an overall increased echogenicity of the brain. Lots of bright areas are seen. Ventriculitis is the inflammation of ventricles. The wall of the ventricle will be thickened and appear hyperechoic. Another feature is stranding of the wall tissue in the ventricles. The ventricles are much more dilated in this image. This image shows the normal frontal lobe of the brain. And over here we have meningitis. The meninges are thickened and hyperechoic. Even the sulci are thick and hyperechoic. Some fluid accumulation is also seen here. This is called extra axial fluid. Thick supracellular cisterns will also be found. You can see the difference in thickness of the cisterns. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.